Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Nice to see you. Welcome to the GTFOWI show. We are back after the summer break. Uh, we took a, a month off just because everyone's away. It was proving tricky to get everyone together. So we thought we'd do a double whammy to kick off the autumn season. So if you're new here, the GTFOWI show, this is all about bringing the community together sharing your wins, inspiring you for the future. Um, and yeah, just giving everyone a big round of applause for all the hard work they've put in and the results they're starting to get. And for me, GTFWI has just been a mantra of mine for a long time. Um, it's the thing that's always got me through everything, right? No matter what's happening, as long as you keep moving forward, keep taking action, keep, keep getting on with it, eventually you'll always get there. If you just do a little bit of action every single day, doesn't matter what else is happening, you will get there. So that's what this is all about, building some momentum in all of you, inspiring you to take action and uh, seeing where it could take you. So how are you doing, Rochelle? Good to see you. I'm fantastic, as always. So nice to see everybody's face. Hey, everyone. Yeah, sure. And uh, gang, if you're watching on Facebook, click the link above the video. Come join in the Zoom. It's much better over here. Um, but yeah. What we got today, Rochelle, we've got a good lineup, I think. We're on a nice, healthy <laughs> schedule, I believe. I'm actually super excited. Well, I'm always excited about this call, but this one I'm, I'm really excited about. We have a lot to celebrate and to catch up on. Um, this might be a little bit of a longer one, so make sure that you guys have some tea or coffee or you probably don't want coffee this late, but grab something to drink. Um, I think we should just dive right in. Um, we're going to bring out Hanya first, and then we're going to bring out Bolia after that. Um, I just need to make sure that they can unmute. Oh. So yeah, we're going to we do a few chats with some of the, uh, the Swickies, and then uh, I think Sam, um, our sales experts, jumping out a little bit later. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll probably do some more swickies. And then we've got some announcements, stuff like that to look forward to. So, Hania, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Hello. Yes. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, it's going well. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So um, the way we normally do this, if you're new here, is uh, just get you to introduce yourself and tell us what it is your offer is. And then tell us uh, what's happened, your journey of success. It sounds like you've uh, had some great results. So, yeah, tell us the full story. Uh, okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm Hanya Opienski, and I'm a naturopath, acupuncturist, and energy medicine specialist. And my offer is um, for uh, women, and it's helping with managing stress and burnout and applying a holistic approach. So, drawing on all of those uh, different uh, skills and uh, qualifications that I have. Amazing. That sounds really interesting. Lots of uh, really cool stuff in there. And uh, so, yeah, what uh, what's happened? I hear you've got your first client. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, so one of the things that I've done as a nutritionist is working with a medicinal mushroom company, uh, and that's functional mushrooms, not magic mushrooms. Oh, I was going to say, uh, we always... <laughs> I know. everyone always goes that way. Uh, yeah, no, that's that's another interesting area of research, but not one that I'm I'm in. Uh, and um, uh, I did a podcast with College of Natural Medicine about medicinal mushrooms, and that's got a lot of views. And so, um, you know, I get people inquiring about wanting to have, you know, health consultations based on mushrooms. It's called mycotherapy. And uh, and so mostly I'm kind of fielding those because, you know, my focus is now more broadly on wellness and a holistic approach and not just seeing, uh, you know, individual clients and naturopathy clients. Um, but then someone who... Um, followed up with me after seeing the the podcast uh, is someone who was my ideal client. And so, you know, she initially asked for, you know, a one-off consultation um, for mycotherapy. And when I heard a bit more about her and what her needs were, I was like, well, hey, actually, you sound like you could benefit from this course that I'm creating. Would you like to be a case study? Uh, and, you know, we can actually do a 10-week program rather than a one-off. Um, and she said yes. And uh, she's American and she's... Um, yeah, she's an entrepreneur who has her own skincare uh, business. And, you know, she's used to, uh, you know, 
paying people for their time. So even after we did the discovery call, she was like, can I pay you for the discovery call? You know, this is, you know, I know you're a professional and this is your time. And so I was like, okay, well, this is someone who's, you know, she already, I already have that, you know, no like trust factor because she's watched my podcast. So, you know, there in that I'm, you know, I'm uh, seen as a, an authority in this area and she's got benefit from that. And then we've kind of connected through the call. And so then I proposed uh, to her, you know, I did the, um, uh, what do you call it, like the reference frame of like, when I launch this course, it's going to cost this much. And my, you know, normal one to one rate is this, but I'm going to offer you this. Um, and so in the end, uh, yeah, we've agreed on a thousand pounds for, you know, a 10 week course. And as a case study price, uh, I'm very happy with that. And uh, now I'm six weeks in and yeah, really loving the process and getting lots of positive feedback from her. And of course, it's kind of means that every week, you know, I have to be creating the next bit of content and kind of, um, yeah, kind of consolidating my ideas and then doing, you know, the, the preparation and the follow up. So the course is now kind of coming together. Uh, and it's been really great that often, like, you know, I have my five pillars and I'm kind of working through them. And um, I found that like, you know, a couple of times I've got to where I'm about to introduce the next pillar and then something that she has experienced during the week is actually she's already started doing the work of the next pillar. And I'm like, well, that's interesting because actually the next thing we're going to do is this. So it feels like it's, um, you know, the the flow that I've created is actually something that's quite organic and it's working for her. So that's really, um, yeah, really lovely to see. Amazing. And just talk about feelings now. So how does it feel like working with someone and helping them what does that feel like and then also just what does it feel like having your first client like mm -hmm. you know what what does that feel like as a transition yeah well it's you know it's very um yeah it's very heartening like you know it feel, I feel like ah oh, okay yes this is something that you know there is a need for this is something that I'm good at this is something that you know I really enjoy and you know someone else is getting benefit from it so you know there's a real yeah, kind of like um, pleasure and enjoyment or, you know, of that and sort of feeling validated that, you know, my idea is, um, yeah, of service, you know, to to someone and, you know, getting getting benefits. So I'm really, uh, yeah, you know, feeling, yeah, feeling positive and kind of excited. I really look forward to those sessions and enjoy, enjoy them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it feels really good. And did you not feel that way before? Were you like, did you doubt? like you'd be able to do it did you doubt you'd be able to provide value because you know a lot of people experience this imposter syndrome and I'm just like yeah. exhibit when people go yeah I did and now I don't kind of thing yeah well it's kind of a mixture because you know it's like it's you know doing a one-to-one -one is much more in my comfort zone and now I am certainly drawing on my different skills and doing a kind of combined thing that I haven't done before I've tended to kind of separate and just be doing mycotherapy or naturopathy or Chinese medicine and so doing something that's a bit more kind of composite um, I wasn't sure quite how that was going to go and, and it certainly is uh, you know, slightly evolving, um, you know, not necessarily the way that I completely planned it. Um, but uh, yeah, it feels it feels good to, you know, to be approaching it from a, you know, holistic point of view. Um, and there was some doubt about, you know, well, how am I going to, you know, you know, am I going to be able to combine these things well in a way that feels cohesive rather than having, you know, a specific framework. Um, so that feels good. Uh, I guess, yeah, I mean, I still feel like I'm curious about how it will be offering this to a group. And that, you know, that's a very different dynamic than, you know, one to one, which I'm much more familiar with. Um, but uh, I am, you know, sort of actively making sure that I'm doing, you know, some coaching and some teaching and kind of, you know, not doing it as I would just as a practitioner. And it really just being, um, you know, like a consultation. So, you know, the dynamic mm -hmm. is different and sort of seeing that actually, uh, I can do the coaching in this context and that you know at one point you know she said to me oh you're, you know I was doing the kind of active listening and you know sort of doing the repeating back to her and summarizing what she's been talking about before going into adding value and she was like oh you're such a good listener you know you really you picked out all the key things that I said so I can see that you know that process uh, is is effective and you know the client then feels really kind of you know seen and heard by that so that again is uh 
And is yeah. that what you learned from Ali's module mm. in the program? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, you know, that process of that, um, you know, how to structure the coaching call and what are the, you know, the, the ways to do that. So yeah, I've kind of used that model and got good feedback. So that was great as well, because that's different than how I would have structured if I was doing like a, you know, practitioner um, session. Fantastic. And yeah, look, the transition to groups can be very, very gentle, you know, just keep going with your one to ones. Once you've got a handful of clients, you can just offer up a weekly group session if people want to check in and ask some questions and just, you know, go really gently like that. And you'll probably find that actually um, it's a very straightforward, easy transition to make and uh, will happen very organically. So, yeah, mm -hmm. don't be too, uh, too worried about that. I wouldn't. Thank but um, great. Well, I'm mindful of uh, the time we have today and the number of people we've got to get to. So thank you so much, Hanny. We'll, we'll cut it off there if you don't mind. May I just ask one question? Uh, in terms sure. of, is it worth, um, you know, getting, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, maybe asking the, the you know, the, the SWIT group or some of my accountability and actually doing like a practice run of doing some group sessions with some kind of, you know, sort of... Uh, yeah, you know, people who um, kind of fit my ideal client thing, but are, you know, sort of friends or, you know, kind of know, know the system. Is that a useful kind of practice or? I probably would say not. I don't, because it sounds a bit forced to me. That sounds a bit, um, it's not, a, it's not going to teach you that much. It's not going to be very lifelike. Whereas when you've got actual clients showing mm -hmm. up and having genuine questions, having going through your program is completely different to just, getting a few people in a room and having a chat do you know what I mean so well no I don't mean like that I mean like you know actually doing some of my you know because my uh you know my initial kind of targeting was uh you know female entrepreneurs who are um mm. you know struggling with stress and burnout and I feel like there's probably a lot of people in our you know our SWIT group who are transitioning from job to business you know to their own business mm. because they're you know feeling stressed or maybe they've experienced burnout so it's like well you know, are there people that would be interested in actually me going through some of the steps to, you know, for them to get some benefit and for me to be able to practice, you know, doing it with a group rather than as a one to one? As a general rule, I don't recommend people kind of give away their programs for free for yeah. testing reasons or just to get some testimonials or anything like that, simply because it, you don't need to. Number mm -hmm. one, you just plain simple don't need to. Um, it's you, you know when you start getting a handful of clients, like I was saying, you, you'll find it's very natural anyway. It's not like it's something you particularly need to practice. I wouldn't say. And then uh, also, it's just like I say, not very realistic. You're not really, even though you know, it's, it, I see what he's saying. It's kind of a, mm. you know similar group and everything, but it's not really going to be a representation in practice. You'll you know see for yourself, but it's it's going to be a different kettle of fish. I'd say so. Yeah, I just, um, I'd focus your energies on doing other things. I'd just focus your energy on, you know, repeating the process and getting more clients in. That should be a sole focus. And those other things will work themselves out quite quickly and easily anyway, is my advice. Okay, thank on that. you. All right. Well, thanks for your share. And um, yeah, great. Off to a good start, Rochelle. I love this show. Also, Fills my heart with joy. I know it. Do you have your tissues beside of you, by the way? No, I haven't. Eat them a little bit later. Right. Every time. It's not like I haven't been warned this time, is it? Um, Hanya, just to wrap up your uh, question as well, you could always um, jump on with Ali and have some practice conversations with him around how to format like group coaching questions, things like that, if you wanted to. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's, yeah, let's move on. Um, Bolia, I know that you need to run a little bit early, so I'm going to have you come on out. I am so excited that you were able to join. We've been trying to get you on for a couple of shows now. So yeah, I'm excited about this one. Yeah, me too. How's it going? Bola? The intro. It's Bola, by the way. Bola, um, sorry. So sorry. Yeah. How are you all? Hope you're all good. Yeah, good. How are you, man? Vodka's ready this evening. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, thanks. And it's a great pleasure to, to sort of meet everybody. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just to sort of talk about my 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 offer. Um, okay, so I've been in the property business for, for many years. I've been, you know, I started off sort of doing a bit of buy to let. Uh, and I ended, I ended up running and still do run a kind of property management business. And what we do is we, we buy and sell property in a nutshell. So I always like this idea of, especially as, you know, the whole lockdown thing came into play. And I always love this idea of being able to um, scale my offer and teach more people how to do what I do. 
but I didn't really know how to package it into some sort of um, offer. And then along came Alex. One day I you know, opened my laptop and I saw this very handsome man on the screen. I thought, what's he talking about? And then, you know, he went on to talk about how simple it could be to take what you know and sell it. So I thought, that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I jumped on the program, um, started working through, and, um, you know, I, 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 I knew I wanted to do, and, and, but what I wasn't sure is, was how to, how to, you know, structure it. So I found the program really useful, and I ended up putting together my, my, my offer, um, and obviously I was quite anxious about how people are going to take it because people know I've been doing property for many years, but I've never really gone out and put myself out there ever. And, and I'm kind of old school as well. So even as far as social media, this idea of posting and putting yourself out all over the place, it just didn't feel natural. So I remember putting my first <laughs> video out there. It was scary. I was like, oh, you know, I need to shave a bit more. You know, maybe I need to wear a different color shirt. I will, you know, every, every, you sort of overanalyze absolutely everything. But anyway, so I went live. I remember having my first couple of calls. And when I actually announced it, because what I did is over the last, since I went live, which is about mid-June, I started doing a lot more work on social media and stuff. So I kind of did this announcement. And the amount of people that came out and said, oh, this is great. Sounds like an amazing idea. I've got so much confidence and reassurance from that. So when I actually started doing my call, I remember it was really, really nerve-wracking. Really, really nerve-wracking. Um, but it went generally quite well. But, but the first two or three people all said they were interested, but no one actually bought. And I remember also um, when I started to go through that call and get towards the end of the call that um, Sam in particular, uh, I think Alex maybe would have said, get them to, you know, get them to pay on that call. But I, it, it didn't feel like a natural step for me. So I, I didn't feel comfortable to really go in for a really heavy close. So just to, just to sort of summarize where I am now, I ended up um, in that first month, I closed five people. I'm up to 10 at the moment, all natural. I haven't started any advertising yet. That's my next step. I want to get onto the um, Google, you know, and sort of start marketing on YouTube, whatever have you. Now, my, 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 I'm selling my, my course at five, 5,000 pounds, 4,995 pounds. Um, the way I originally I was going to start at 3,000, what I soon realized was people, it's all about perception of value. And I realized that, um, it, it, that, you know, that, that value, the higher I price it at, the more people would buy into and assume that I'm going to offer value. Now, I know I can offer value, but in the, in the eyes of the people that were looking at what I was doing, you know, that I was communicating to, they, they, it was quite clear that they associated value with the price. So I go in and say, look, my price is nine five, you know, what, what I, my standard off line, I suppose, is when I go live with this program, it's going to be priced at £9,990. And then I go on to talk about what the program offers, you know, the modules, and, you know, you get group coaching calls, blah, blah, blah. But what I say is, look, you know, I'm, I'm on the beta phase and, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking to sign up just 10 people. And I say to them, by coming on board, you're going to get, you know, you can get, you can get it at half price, 4995 But in addition, I say to them, what you get now that you won't get when I go live is you get one-to-one -one calls. Now, I offer my I offer my my mentees one-to-one -one calls weekly. Probably too many. I realize now it's pretty, when you've got ten people. I mean, I do them all on a Tuesday, but you, I, I do wonder whether I should have maybe done it once every two weeks. But they love it. They absolutely love it because they get to connect with me, um, and it's working really well. I mean, everyone seems to be really happy with, with what I'm doing. They're making progress. You know, I'm recording. I'm adding content fairly consistently. And yeah, I enjoy it. It's, it's something I know quite well. And I feel quite happy that I've been able to structure it into this offer that people are, people are liking. So, so That's far, awesome. so good. Still a bit nerve wracking at times, but I've got past that. And what I've also got past is the whole social media thing. Now, I, I, I really couldn't care less about putting out posts. I'm confident about putting out posts. And it comes across so when I talk on camera now, particularly on social media, I come across much, much more confidently um and people just buy into it and, and also you realize that people don't really care about you know the shirt or whether you should have shaved etc so all that you start to realize just doesn't matter so yeah that's a sort of um yeah quick summary i suppose no that's good i was just thinking when you're saying that um doing all those one-to-ones in the early days i think they're actually more in your benefit than they are in your client's benefit because you're going to learn so much by teaching those people it will really expand your own knowledge it will throw different curveballs at you 
and it will really teach you what people really need and where they're at and where they need to get to. So, you know, I think over time you'll gradually in, in the back of your mind, at least utilize that to create a much better program. And sure, you can transition away from that. Um, you don't have to offer that to anyone else. Um, yeah. But certainly I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't regret it because, yeah. you know, that level of intensity, you, you'll be learning massive amounts. Going through. Yeah. And my plan is, when I go live to the, I suppose, to the general launch, I'll be probably just throw, uh, so they're not going to get the one-to-one. -one. I might throw them, you know, I'll probably offer them a few, three or four to use as they want, you know, as part of just to get them, just to get it closed. And then I'm going to start doing um, the group calls. I do actually still do a group call. Like, so once a week on a Tuesday, I do this kind of group call streamed live on Facebook. Um, but not many people will join. I mean, I've only got 10 anyway, but sometimes you get one or two, but because I'm talking to them every week, they know that they can speak to me every week. So I, I, I usually just talk about one of the subjects and then kind of, you know, um, just make them aware of the fact that they can reach out and I'm here to support them and that kind of thing. Yeah, they keep that going. Even if like maybe make it ticket only, people got some questions, they can drop those in. So you only run it if there's interest. And then that will be the thing you naturally transition to um, long-term. And uh yeah, like don't kind of feel like it has to be some big new launch going into um, groups and the new offer and everything like that. Just just keep the ball rolling and just transition gradually. And um, what else was I going to say? I had on the tip of my tongue then. Um, yeah, with one-to-ones with the new clients, rather than feeling like you have to offer them like three or four as part of the package or whatever, just do them as you need to. So make it a group offer and that makes it more manageable for you because that can easily get overwhelming if you're not careful. So just offer them group sessions only. But then if people do need the odd one-to-one, -one, as sometimes people do, you can yeah. just do that. You know, you can just say, hey, look, I see you're struggling with that. Let's jump on a one-to-one -one call and then let's yeah, uh, dive a bit deeper on that then it, it feels more valuable to people as well i think because like they they really appreciate because you, obviously you're not just delivering part of what you promised anyway you're actually going above and beyond yeah. um which you are and uh yeah it just creates a better framework otherwise what you end up with because i used to uh do it that way a long time ago now where i would give them like three or four including the package and all that would happen is in their last week of the program they'd use like three or four in one week just so they used it and like by the third one like so what we're talking about today i don't know alex what i thought you'd know like <laughs> no i haven't got a clue yeah. oh well, well let's just have a chat and it's like it's a total and i hate that i hate wasting time like that so it just yeah. wasn't worth it so i would just make it you know on your terms and just offer them as you need to and it's much better that way okay cool but yeah no it's good fun it's a great experience um i'm really enjoying it at the moment i'm looking forward to you know starting the general marketing and the youtube and all that kind of stuff and see how that yeah. goes yeah and you're obviously rocking because i know you had like 15k in one week didn't you when uh yeah well, one week weekend go. actually it one was weekend i was thinking are they gonna close because what i do is I, I, I personally have a slightly different style to, um, I think what Sam was doing. I don't push them on that call to spend that 5K. I, I, I say, look, this is it, this is the offer. And you can usually tell if they wanna do it or not. And usually with my offer, the main reason why they won't do it might be affordability. Um, so, so some people, you, you know, you might think that they want to do it, but they genuinely wanna think about it. And I often just say, look, all right, well, I'll schedule a call and say, look, let's talk about it in two days time then. But I don't really push them too hard on that call. Um, and that's what's worked for me with my with my office. Yeah, for sure. Like everyone has their own style with that. Yeah. Um, and again, you'll you know you'll find your your balance with that. But that's interesting. So 15k in one weekend. So that's a taste of the future right there. Because you extrapolate that. I mean, you're not even doing any paid ads yet. But imagine if you did a similar level throughout the whole month. That's a 225 thousand pound month right there at that run rate. Right. So you just think like if you just up the ante, up the volume going through, you've already built the machine to generate that level of income. Two hundred twenty-five thousand pounds, you know, simply doing more of what you've already been doing. So that's something you should all, you know, be very excited about. Yeah, definitely sounds good. <laughs> you just got to make it happen now. You just got to push the buttons and turn the knobs, and there, uh, and off you go. You know, absolutely. Just get get cracking excited to see your Thank journey you. and Thank uh you. what Thank would you, you say um 
to anyone at the beginning of their journey right now? What kind of uh, inspiration would you share with them to motivate I would, them? I would definitely say that it's it, it's scary when you, when you that that moment of first putting yourself out there is it it seems scary at the time, but it's <laughs> it sounds easier said than done. But it's it, it's not as scary as it may seem at that time. So in other words, people don't you know people don't expect huge greatness from you you know you're, you're you, you've come out you, you want to make a statement there's an offer there's something new you're about to announce so just do it confidently um try and do it as naturally as possible i would say um the social media is really good uh, it, it, i found it's really good for reinforcing trust and credibility that's what i found it's really good for because in my industry people know that i'm experiencing property so when i you know make a talk about property a little bit or uh, show a little bit of you know my home like i'm doing here or, or um, talk about, um, you know, um, some advice. In fact, I, I even do a lot of posts about mindset because in my, in my view, in order to be a success, to make a success of any of this, you've got to have the right mindset. So I do a lot of mindset posts. And also I find that quite easy to, to you know, to, to come up with a couple of lines a day or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can find that space where you're comfortable um, and just be natural and just do your thing naturally and let it roll off. And, and you know what? If you make a mistake, who cares? I heard the statement. I think it was Tony Robbins: "Imperfect action." That's that's the key. Making do, make, doing it. Uh, it doesn't even matter if it's not great, if it's imperfect, but just doing it. And who cares if it's wrong? Who cares if you make a spelling mistake? Just doing it. And I think that's the key. Just taking action. Yeah, imperfect action beats perfect inaction. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's it. Phrase, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. No, good share. Thanks very much, Bo, uh, Bola. Sorry. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, coming on to the show. I know it's uh, been a juggle to get you on. So yeah, it's great to have you here. Thanks very much. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. And good luck. I'm still going to be hanging around till about uh, eight o'clock or so, in which case I've got to dash off to play a bit of five-a-side football. But I'll be here listening on your stories for the time being. Sure, man. I was playing football with my son this afternoon in the sun. It was lovely. So cool. Oh, lovely. All right. Thanks very much. All right, guys. Take Catch care. You. Catch you soon. All right, let's keep this train rolling. I'm going to pull Mark out next. I'm super excited to hear about his update as well. Um, we've had handfuls of conversations. So Mark, hey. Hi, Rochelle. Hi. Hi. Can everybody hear me? Hopefully. That's great. Um, well, what's my story? I'm a psychologist and I work in a rehabilitation unit uh, with adults and we bring them back into society, getting them back into work and getting them back into having a normal life. That's what I do during the day. I've been living in Germany for the last 35 years and I joined Swiki to uh, offer a English speaking program. Um, because I wanted to work with the English language again, because I don't use the English language in my work. So that's what I set about. And I have been with Swick now around about 18 months. And I did launch many months back in the English language with the UK market. And I wasn't really getting very good results. I wasn't really getting any decent people coming through on my calls. So I wasn't getting very many calls. So I was very disappointed. What did I do? Well, I just spoke about what I was doing in the area where I was working. So I eventually got three organic clients in the German language. And I didn't have any program built, nothing whatsoever. I had everything in the English language. And people said to me, well, um, I don't want it in English. Can they have it in German? So I literally built it on a, a week by week basis for them. And I offered um, individual calls for each client. Uh, I started out with one client and then I had um, got three. So basically I got two straight away, more or less at the same time. And I offered them twice a week one-to-one uh, -one calls. And one client said, oh, can we have a group call? I want to meet the other people. Unfortunately, the other two didn't want to do that. <laughs> so I would have loved to have had a, a group call straight away, but unfortunately, it didn't happen. Um, at the moment, I tend to have one client who calls all the time, comes in on the calls all the time, and would love to have a call every single day with me. Um, I have said to her, we'll keep it to two and 
Um, I've done that. And what I do is I also make them um, send in questions four hours in advance. That's great. So really get them into a routine that way. Mm -hmm. And I haven't even told you what I do, have I? Oh, my God. No, you my, haven't. I am awfully sorry. Something just, in German. Sorry? Something in German. That's all we know. I'm awfully sorry. I, I, I will now use the excuse and say I wanted to you know, make the suspense large and, and say what my program now is. And what my program is, is I help people who have experienced the yo-yo effect in losing weight before to lose weight permanently without diets, without stress and without any fitness routines. And I do it with uh, helping them change healthy habits and make wins on a daily basis. That's basically what I do. And that's my program. So. Sorry about that. It came a bit little late in my presentation. Um, so anyway, I'm now with those three people and I do that with them. And um, it's a great way of me learning from them as well, because I've I've been picking up the, the general problems that they have going through what I've, I've, I've got in my program. And I build it, build on that each week. And um, basically, I'm learning as well. I had, when I first started SWIC, I had everything planned, what I was going to put into my program. And now I have that, and I use that just as a skeleton. And I've got so much more that I've learned from the clients along the way that I've, had, I've got in the program. Um, they are virtually now coming up to the end of the um, uh, 12 weeks that I offer, the 12 week program. And they have um, shown that they've got stability in what they're doing with me. They've also lost um, kilos, some of them more than others. Um, and yeah, I see it as, uh, as something that I'm gonna build on in the German language now. I, I, uh, as I say, I haven't, I haven't launched in German, I've launched in English, but I'm putting everything together now. I'm building the, um, uh, the program now in German and um, I'll probably launch in a couple of weeks time. I'll go, I'll, um, I'll go through Greg with Swift Tools and put all that together. So yeah, that's about basically it. Because yeah, we had that chat. I remember a little while back, wasn't it? That uh, yeah, you know, sure. you you were just winning in Germany. So I said, just keep just going with what's working. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, Mike, and Mark's wife assures him that his accent's really sexy in uh, German. By the way, everybody you, like his English I, accent. Alex, you would not believe it, but I have a I have a, a new colleague who joined um, the company I'm working with during the day. She um, telephoned with me and she said to me, oh, I like your accent. And I said, oh, don't start, please, don't start. <laughs> and yes. uh, I, I said, yeah, 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 don't start. <laughs> but if, one, I hear it, if I hear it from other people than my wife, I said to my wife the other night, I believe it more from other people than from you because you can just put me up on it. Um, so, um, so it's nice to hear that. And, and I'm going to play down that road. I'm going to... Um, um, I'm going to play down that road. If I have a nice accent, why not? And that could be my unique selling point in the German language because, you know, um, yeah. This is it, people. This is it, you know, like could be the secret source. Who knows, right? But um, yeah, if you're winning, then double down yeah. that. And it's, it's good to hear that, um, you know, all the things we talk about all the time, like uh, off a skeleton, giving you the structure later on when you're actually building your program. Yeah. And um, building it as you go. And uh... oh, that was great to, to actually keep to that. Because if I'd have not listened to that, I'd have built it and I would not have been at the stage where I, I am now. I would have, I would, I would have really gone crazy and said, oh no, not again. I've got to build it again. So I, I, I was great to have delayed it at the start. Thanks for that. That was one great tip. Well, this is the essence of what we all do, right? Like, there's no point in you learning that lesson again when I've already learned that lesson for you, right? Yeah. So it's the same. You've already learned all the lessons for your clients already. And this is what we give people is just shortcutting past all of that so that yeah. you can just get to first base much more quickly. So, yeah, it's just great to hear when people go through the, you know, the journey that we already know is uh, is mapped out for you. So, yeah, that's really exciting. And uh, do you mind sharing with everyone uh, how much you're charging, how much you've made so far? Because everyone loves to hear that. It's 995 I charge. And um, with the people who have joined me, one client said to me, after three weeks in, I'd have paid you double. And I said, oh, great, great to know. Thanks very much. Go on then. 
there's no problem. Um, so. Again, as, what was it, Bola? Um, he, he was saying about price. That's it. The price, I don't think, is 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 uh, an obstacle. I think um, I think it's the if the if if the right person's in front of you, then then that's that's the key. And mm. I think that's what I've I've realised uh, with the German clients. They they were more or less wanting wanting it before I was even talking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, what would you say to anyone at the beginning of their journey? What would you say to motivate and inspire people? Oh, um, develop a thick skin because going on uh, on live on video is is something that not everybody wants to do. Um, you've got to, you've got to go through that 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 um, that stage where you can present yourself to a live audience. Um, Listen to to tips from everybody. There's got so many great tips out there. Um, I'm in a great um, accountability group, the Rebuilders. We have we support each other, and it's, it's a great weekly group, and we really um, you know help each other along. And each of us have gone on different little ways, and we experience different things. And it's it's really good to from everybody. You can learn from everybody, and that's it. Just have an open mind. Great. Nice, no, great share. Thanks very much. And uh, yeah, great to see you doing well, Mark. Thanks for jumping on the show and um, sharing your journey with everybody. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome, Mark. Keep it up. That's exciting. I'm so happy for you. Good job. Okay. Um, okay, so we're not quite halfway through um, these inspiring stories. However, we have somebody that popped in that I want to pull out. Um, so Sam is one of our mentors some of you guys definitely know him. hey sam hello thanks for coming thank you for inviting me yeah thanks for being here sam appreciate you giving us your time mm -hmm. and uh i'm a big fan of sam everybody he's an awesome awesome member of the team on so many levels not only is he mental you guys but um yeah, he's fantastic on our team meetings, challenges me all the time. Why well, does it say challenges? Just say, uh, Alex, that's a stupid idea uh, most weeks. But, uh, you know, you need that. You need that from your team. So, uh, yeah, he's never afraid to uh, let it fly. So, uh, yeah, he's a great, he's a pillar of our community, pillar of our team, and a uh, great guy all around. And we're really lucky to have him on so many levels. So, uh, yeah, and as you can see behind him, the most intelligent man in the world, um, very well read. Uh, if you look closely, it's things like Jane and Freddie go to the beach, <laughs> English, Norwegian, Norwegian, English dictionaries, things like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, he's very clever. He's a seriously clever guy. But uh, yeah, thanks, Sam. So have you got something uh, you want to share with the, the, the gang? I was going to call them the class, but that's a bit patronizing. Um, I guess I see a lot of familiar faces here. Uh, I guess for me, what, what I'd love to share is... You know, the, the resources that Alex has gone out of his way to provide for you guys, um, leverage it to the max. So for example, I, I mentor more on the sales side and the enrollment and have how to have conversations. And one of the things that I see um, repeat itself a lot with a lot of our clients is people tend to forget, which is natural in any way, because you start a business, you really want to make money. But they tend to forget that what we want to do is focus on helping people, right? And if you have that as your central theme, then when you get on calls and you start having conversations with people, it could be a chat on Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever, or when you even book them on a call, if your focus is really, how can I help this person if possible? It no longer is a sales conversation. It's more about you really looking to see, can I really help? Is this someone I want to bring into my environment and help them live better? And when you do that, what happens is that when they leave the conversation, whether or not they become a client, they will have had an experience with you that could transform their life. So um, one of the things I noticed, a lot of people, when they first start, I see Moina here, um, I see Patricia, Brooke. When I say to them, look, forget the hard sales approach. Just have a conversation. We're giving you a script, a process to follow. Just use that. Make it soft. Make it gentle. Focus on them. People go like, but yeah, but are you sure it's going to work though? 
And I said, just, just try it, right? And then they do, and they're like, oh my God, Sam, I'm at a sale. I'm like, okay, and they just do it again. And sometimes people come on the calls, and, and I see this as well with other coaches and the mentors. Um, we want the best for you, and we know what works. We've tested it, we failed, we've succeeded, we figured out what works. And when you get on uh, a session, sometimes we're saying, you know what? I know what you're doing. You think that, that's the way to do it. Um, but why don't you try it this way? When you have some doubts, I would say doubt your approach that hasn't been working and do what we're saying. Because when you do, you'd be surprised by the results. Yeah? I know Marina is a lot happier now that, now that she's had how many sales <laughs> come in? <laughs> Four. All right. Um, and then I think the other, the other bit is um, when you follow the process we laid out, don't expect to be perfect when you start. Don't put yourself under that kind of pressure. Always have in your mind that I just want to practice and see how this works out. If you do, it becomes a, a bit more fun and the clients can sense that from you, which makes it a lot easier for them to want to work with you as well. Yeah. Don't expect to be perfect. Just practice, practice. And after a while, it becomes quite natural. Um, one of the sticking points I noticed a lot of people have, I think someone mentioned it just now, or when someone said to him, I would have paid you double, is when they want to tell people how much to invest in their program, they're like, uh, uh, yeah, so um, um, my program costs um, um, 9,000 9, pounds, 500 pounds, and they stutter. I don't know if you charge is 9,000 right now, but they stutter, they get worried that people won't pay. And I would say to you, like, remember that what you're doing for them is you're taking, I think Sabina actually made me come up with this when I had one of my first calls with her, Sabina Wahid. Um, she was hesitant about charging, what was it then? 500 or 800 pounds for a program. And I said, Sabina, you have to realize what you're doing is you're taking 15 or 20 years of experience and you're shrinking it all the way down into 12 weeks. What is the value of 10 to 15 years of stress you're saving your clients? Is it worth a thousand pounds? Of course, 2,000, 3,000. And with that small shift, I think Sabina charges what? What is it now, Rochelle? Do you know? 1,009 something? 1,500, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Last I heard. Yep. Yeah. So it's gone all the way up now. Yeah. 1,597. So if you just have the confidence that just remember what you're doing for them is you're helping them avoid years of suffering and stress by bringing all that information into a short space of time. You're creating transformation. And if you remember that, then it becomes easy to have this conversation. That's what I have to share. I love Amazing. That. Good stuff there. Some real gems. I'm actually making notes. There's some good stuff in there. <laughs> I'm going to pinch that for the workshops, I think. Um, so has anyone got any questions they want to ask Sam? He's wide open, all yours. Take advantage of him, please. So get your questions in the chat. Um, or maybe raise your hand, maybe bring you out possibly. Um, so Sam, where do you think most people go wrong when you're chatting to them? What's the number one thing? Like, how can we shortcut people a little bit faster? Like what maybe like the top three things that people do consistently wrong when they're getting into sales initially would you say um i think i think the first big one uh, when it comes to swick is just not following the process we've laid out for them we've given you a script use it mm. it might sound unnatural when you when you're starting out but it works um i said this on one of the calls a couple of weeks ago that Part of the challenge we sometimes have is because Alex doesn't say, and I don't say, most of the other mentors don't, don't often tell you how much we invested to learn the skills. Mm. So when we give it to you, like just simply, so for example, I write scripts for everyone who comes on the, on the call. I rewrite the scripts, review it, make sure it's good, and then tell you to go use it. Typically, that's a 2,000 pound um, fee to do that on a good day but you get it for free. So maybe because that happens, we don't take the script so seriously. So that's the first thing. Use the script that we give to you and follow it. When you master it, then you can start flexing around doing other stuff. But until then, that's the first one. Um, the second thing would be, like I said earlier, just focus on helping people. 
when you're having the conversation, relax, it's an exploration. I, I tend to tell people, don't think about it as a sales conversation. It's an exploration. You want to find out as much as possible about the person. And sometimes it's okay to tell the person, you know what? I don't think you're ready. I don't think you know, you're quite ready to make this leap yet. I think maybe you give yourself a month or two and then come back and then we do it then. Sometimes you, you can do that because that's what they need at that time. And other times you tell them, no, you need to do this now because you've been putting this up all this while. Because the key driver there is you want to help them. So you tell them what they need at that time. I think that would be the second thing. And then the third thing would be just relax. It takes time. <laughs> Some people want to want to put out their offer and start making sales like like that. I know we all do, but it, sometimes it just takes a bit of time. But once it starts happening, you will not believe it yourself. Those would be my top three. Yeah, everyone sucks at sales the first few months <laughs> without fail. Like you got to remember, probably between just me and Sam, we've taken thousands of calls. Like we really did the legwork to get to that level to be able to you know, help people in the right way and, you know, get close rates up to like 50, 60, 70%. That takes so much practice. You would not believe like when I'm preaching you guys like, shut up, don't say anything, just help them. Just, you know, ask the questions. That's because I learned that the hard way, like many hundreds of times over. So yeah, Sam's right. Just, you know, like I've been saying um, to Mark, we've already done that for you. So just start from where we left off. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's a uh, it's an art form you know it's something that you should learn to master this is it's of all the things with this i would say it's the one thing that's like learning to play the violin you know you you can spend many years forever getting better at it forever getting better at it and become a real maestro like sam you know really really master that craft and that's the the length of time you should be focusing on, you know, you should zero in on that journey. Know that you're rubbish now. Know that you're going to, you know, lose lots of sales that you realize later you could have got. So what, right? Like the more you do it, the quicker you get into it, the less you beat yourself up, the faster you'll get there. And if you beat yourself up too much, you'll talk yourself out of being like good enough to do it, you know? And uh, I think it's fair to say, like, Brooke went through that journey. She was like, I hate sales. I don't want to do it. And then uh, started to get good at it. And then I think now she's in a different place with it, you know? So, yeah, just understand that's everyone's journey, I think. Most people, anyway. So I think we've got some questions in the chat. Um, mm. Do you want to jump into those, Sam? All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, should I take them one at a one then? One at a time then, yeah? Yeah, maybe uh, do them pretty snappy because obviously yeah. time can run away. When in a message chats on LA, how do you invite them on a call and make it sound natural? All right, so for, for LinkedIn and pretty much for any other um, social media platform, if you are the one doing the outreach to them, I recommend looking at your profile, find out a little bit about them and compliment them on something on your profile and then just ask them a question to engage them. Do not invite them on a call straight off if you're doing an outreach. Now, if you make a post on LinkedIn and they reach out to you, then you can invite them into a call. So that's a bit different. And then if you do an outreach and they, um, you compliment them, ask the question, did they respond? Start the conversation. You have a DM script already prepared for you in the platform. Just use that, just follow that script, yeah? Uh, let's see. How many calls with the script should we do before we say, okay, this is not working for me and I just the offer um, or even the script? Uh, that's a tough one because it's difficult to say whether or not you're even delivering the script properly. So I, can, I can't answer that. I would have to actually see what you're doing on the call and review it and then give you feedback to say, okay, maybe you need to make some adjustments here. That's a case um, by case basis for sure. Yeah, it's a case by case basis. How do you achieve a balance between digging into the pain and keeping rapport? <laughs> yeah, that's a bit to take it, yeah. Um, digging into the pain and keeping rapport. If you start a conversation the way we tell you to, letting them know that you want to find out a bit more about them and where they are, where they want to be, so you can see if you can help them, that frame at the beginning of the conversation gives you leeway 
to dig as far as possible in the conversation. You will not break rapport if you set that frame at the beginning. Yeah. Um, how do we ask for their email to send a freebie when we can send it via, via chat? Um, so if you have a, you're having a DM conversation, you just tell them. So I want to send you something in an email. So I'll, could you just let me have that and I'll email that to you? Most people will just say sure. Most people will not say no, 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 no. Yeah, just tell them you're going to do that. Okay, I think that was the last one. Okay, as as I'm meant to get in um, fluent Spanish, you guys start out one-on-one -on -one call by doing a 15-minute exercise in Spanish. Pepe, I, am, I do not understand the question. Or maybe say some of my questions in Spanish, you'll see if they understand me. I think he um, means like, do you, you kind of do some sort of exercise with them on the call? I I would say no to that. Mm. I'd say... Um, yeah. Sounds a bit of coaching, isn't it? For free. I wouldn't do the on the webinar. I wouldn't get them to yeah. do anything until they're in the program, really. I wouldn't get them to do um, anything in the webinar. Don't give them actions to take. The only action you want to take is to book the call. And then in, in the call, you're simply diagnosing the problem. You're not helping them. You're not teaching them. You're simply asking them questions, right. listening, diagnosing the problem. And if you feel you can help them, then you can make them an offer. That's yep. it. Do not go off piece from that ever. Right. Uh, how do you say no to sending a program outline during an enrollment call while reassuring the potential client? So if you do the presentation piece uh, of your call, that would have given them an outline. If you're talking about them asking you to give, give um, them a breakdown of that, you can say, sure, I can do that. Um, can I ask you a question? Yes. What would you want to happen after you've seen that outline laid out in the email? Because you want to find out what the next action would be. You want to know what is going on in their mind, why they're asking for that. So you want to check that. And you can always send, I sometimes send people a summary of our, our conversation after a call. And if we have booked a follow-up call, okay? So you can do that. Ask them why they want it, why they want it. And then what they want to be the next action once they've gone through it. That's where you know their frame of mind. Um, if you have a question to ask about your course script will be different, isn't it? No, your script is your script is your script. Your script is your script is your script. You follow your process. You don't change it for anyone. You obviously make some modifications, but generally the framework stays the same. How do you answer someone in an email that keeps asking about the price? Um, <laughs> I think if I said this in a lot of the videos, I'll say what you can do is you, you can say to them, like, um, would it make sense for me to understand the situation a bit more be, so that I know what exactly to recommend? Because I have different options I can offer depending on what exactly you need. You know, then you can add, like, an example. So for example, like a doctor needs to kind of um, do a, what's the word? Um, diag diagnosis. Um, that, yeah, diagnosis before making a prescription. Does that make sense? And if you want, we can get on a quick call and we can talk about it, then I'll know what to say to you. That's where I would handle that. Usually, don't give people price because there's no context for it. I've always liked Dan Locke's way of doing this. You know, where people say, "How much is it?" It's like, I don't know. Don't even know I, <laughs> I can help you yet. Let alone like what exactly? What <laughs> How am I supposed to know? Not quite, not quite so harsh, but yeah, I love that. I love that. Line. I love Dan Locke's style with that. Line. I don't know. Suits my style big time. I think what you might miss one there, options? mate. From yeah, uh -huh? we have different options. Create options yeah. for yourself. Just write it down somewhere, just so you can maintain authenticity when you're saying you have different options. Write them. Even if you haven't created them, just write them down. Different price points, different pro products. Keep them. If that helps your frame of mind, just do yeah. that. I think that's it. You can always create different levels, gang. You can always create yeah. different amounts of support, like one-to-ones, more of those, more group. Like In the early days, you can find your feet with that and just give people what they want and what they need don't get too hung up on having a very rigid um framework and an offer and things like that um did i miss any yeah there was one from tony i think business development what is your um, process for target what is the process for tar um okay so i think that comes down to you who do you feel like you can help best most like when you when you think about what you want to do what's a picture of the person that comes to your mind that's what's going to help your target identification. And if you need more help with that, get on one of the um, offer feedback calls or even one of the ad calls with um, Greg because identifying your, the target audience is part of what we do there. Yeah, hope that helps. Yeah, that's good. Awesome, thanks. That's all of them, isn't it? It is. 
All right, I'm going to run away now. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much, mate. That was really helpful, really useful. I'm sure the, the guys enjoyed that a lot. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Right. Who's up next? All right. Um, and then again, if you guys need Sam, you know that he's here on Mondays and Thursdays. Just submit a ticket. Uh, he'll role play with you too on your conversations. I know that you guys have fun with that. Okay, let's continue with um, some more success stories. I'm going to pull out Coretta. How's it going, Coretta? Coretta are you there? Hi. Uh... Hey. So I was lucky to meet Coretta a couple of times, actually, because like, I didn't. you were in London before and then uh, came up to Letchworth for the last meetup. And this is, uh, before we dive in, Coretta, I just wanted to, because um, I knew you were there and it made me remember to uh, to talk about the, the meetup. So if you didn't know, a couple of weeks ago, we all met up in Letchworth here. Um, it's a good number, wasn't it? About 25, Coretta, something like that? I think 30, yeah. maybe. Um, and yeah, it was awesome. And uh yeah, we want to try and do that more often. So I'm thinking we might do another one in September, um, maybe the 23rd. So I'm kind of penciling that in. So if you guys can uh, see if you can make it to that, it'd be great to meet some more of you. Um, we had a lot of fun. It was good. Um, great shares. Everyone getting to meet each other in person makes it very real. So, uh, yeah, come on. Uh, come on up. It's going to be another good one, I think. So sorry, Coretta um great to see you so yeah why don't you as we've been doing share who you are what your offer is all about and then a bit about the success you've had because if you've got three clients now is that right four now four we can't keep up around here we're so slow <laughs> <laughs> hi everyone thanks for inviting me on um so as you say my name's coretta and my offer is helping ethnic minority leaders who've experienced discrimination and racism that's holding them back a lot of challenges issues with mindset and their self-belief um, and it's helping them to get over that so that they can then go to the leadership positions that they want or those who are in leadership positions they find themselves stuck and then it's how do they get on past all of the stuff that's happening in society but also in their head that's kind of holding them back so it's a lot of it is about mindset. And then there is a bit about leadership as well that gives them some of the skills or enhances their leadership skills. So that's my offer. Um, a bit like um, Bola earlier, I came across Alex when I was probably searching for some divine inspiration. And there was Alex who popped onto my screen. And um, yeah, there was just something about you that I thought, well, why not give it a go? I'd wanted to, so I'd spent 30 odd years in the public sector, got myself up to senior leadership, and then knew that that was something I wanted to do in terms of the challenges I'd faced, wanted to help people get over that and not have to go through the years that I went through of struggle to get to where they wanted to get to. I think I thought it'd be a lot easier than it actually was I thought how difficult can it be I want to coach people you know I'd got qualifications in coaching etc and I thought how difficult can it be didn't realize actually what goes into it and what is behind it or what you need and everything else so for me the course and going through it I mean literally it was a nightmare finding out everything that I needed to do but it was so what I needed because I think I would have just tried a couple of things, dabbled, and then just thought, nah, you know, it's not for me, or this isn't going to work. I think I always had faith in the system, always had faith in the process. It was just about me getting to grips with everything. And boy, is there so much to get to grips with. But I think that was the thing for me. Um, and yeah, so just working through it painstakingly, going through everything, never giving up even on those days when you're crying into your wheat a bit, you know, just not giving up, just keeping going. Um, yeah. And then so getting my three clients, that happened. So one came through Facebook. So I started doing all the Facebook Sorry, stuff. Sure. Oh, who's that? Anyway, that's probably something of mine here. So I um, I started going through Facebook. It's Alexa or something. 
Um, so I started going through Facebook, putting all the posts on Facebook. Didn't really like all that, but thought I'm going to keep going with it. Kept going with it anyway. And so I got somebody who approached me through Facebook. That was my first one. Um, and so I charged her £850. And I was very much one of those. Oh, oh yeah, it's £850 and hoped to see what would happen. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, she bought into it. And then I had another client. I basically, I did um, an event. So it was a live event, face-to-face -face event with two events I did with people, about 20 people. Um, and then at those events, I got people who then contacted me. I gave a link to contact me. And then people contacted me saying that they, you know, on the call and that. So I had my calls with them, followed the script, um, as you say, it does get easier. Followed the script and um, yeah, they liked it. I do think there was a little bit of when people come to you, I think there's a bit of their mind made up. So I feel like it's a bit of mine to lose. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so had those two calls and got someone, got two people through those calls. And then there was about a month's gap. So I thought, oh, that's it. It's all done. And then someone else contacted me um and yeah had the call with them and then they said yes so that was my four and so I went up from 850 to 1200 mm -hmm. um, and I think part of the thing of going up was as I started to then do the program from the first person I then realized how much value I was given and how much value the program was and then that made it so much easier to then up my price and now I feel quite confident with my price and even saying actually maybe a bit more because I do one-to-ones and do the coaching program and I've been creating the program as I go so I've got um uh the, so the guy started the coaching program now and uh so I've, he's had his first few videos and I'm kind of just drip feeding them through so that I can then you know make the programs and stuff as I go so yeah, so that's where I am. It's been a roller coaster, let me tell you. But I have enjoyed it, and I've learned so much. Oh, that's great. Yeah, no, thanks for giving a very authentic uh, rendition of the journey. So yeah, good to hear. And I love your offer. I think it's amazing. I think it's going to be so exciting seeing those people get those jobs and reach those positions um, and have those impacts. And I think that's a, a fantastic thing to uh to do and create and i'm honored to have some small part in that to help you to do that you know and as i'm sure the team are too so yeah amazing and um so how are you finding it working with clients now what just talk about how that feels like the difference and you know just talk about it's, that a little it's great because you that's why you're here isn't it you want to help people you want people to for me it's to develop to transform to reach their true potential so when you're doing that with someone it's amazing the feeling is amazing and to know that what you've put together somebody wants you know and I think there was a big thing for me it's like yeah okay I've got this fanciful dream but you know who necessarily is going to want it so when people want it um it is amazing and I think you say that you only need to be one step ahead of them but I think until you start talking, I always make the assumption that everybody knows everything, mm. but it's only when you get talking and you get, um, you know, on these one-to-ones with people that you realise actually they really don't know as much as you and they really do need to know what you know. So once you kind of get that into your head, it's like, you know, you are really giving to these people the stuff that they need. So, yeah, so it's great. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, that's something we do hear quite a lot, actually, is, you know, people are always shocked at how much they know and how little their new clients know. And that's, you know, when people come into this with this big imposter syndrome, I'm always trying to convey to them, no, 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 like, when you start working with people, you'll realise you're a wizard to them. You're like a, you know, you're a mystical being, all-knowing yeah. person. And they're just like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And that that gap is normally much bigger than people realise, isn't it? So, yeah, that's, uh, that's you know, good to hear that you're making that difference to them and 
um helping them that way and yeah long may it continue so we get really excited for you Coretta thanks very much for thank you coming on and sharing your journey and um yeah good luck for the future I'm excited to see how you do and can I just say um that for me the one of the biggest turning points was the the day that we had on the SWIC tools where All right, we had with Brooke and Steve so mm. much thanks to them because that got me over that hurdle of kicking the deflated ball around and it wasn't mm. really going anywhere that really got me over that just that day focus sitting getting the swip tools up and running and that then pushed me kind of on that last little bit I needed so thank you to you and them for creating that putting that together and what have you it was brilliant well do you know what Craig let's segue into uh talking about the next one I know I can see Rochelle jumping around itching to do that anyway so uh why don't we do that we do. So it's good that she brought that up. Um, Brooke, are you there? We do have another SWIC Tools Sprint Day coming up. Brooke, would you like to explain or would you like me to go over it? I may need to. <laughs> Let me get some information. Yeah, her audio is not very good today, gang. Yeah, she's uh, she's stuck in Barbados. Imagine that. No, hey, she's not. She's in Spain. Oh, she's in Spain. That's right. She did say mm -hmm. that. Um, all right. So you guys have a Sprint uh, Swick Tools Day coming up on Saturday, the 2nd of September. That's this Saturday, starting 11 a.m. UK time. Uh, there is a checklist. It'll be in your newsletter. Uh, so you've got your checklist posted in the Mentorship Community Facebook group, and then we've also put it in the newsletter for you guys, um, things that you'll want to get ready. Brooke might be typing, it looks like. Oh, apologies. You, you're unmuted, but I can't hear you now. How about now? Is this yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I went to buy new headphones, but obviously that didn't help. Um, but yes, it's on It's on Saturday. It's from 11 a.m. because I thought I would be in Barbados, so I shifted it to my 6 a.m., but I don't think anyone wants to wake up at UK 6 a.m. anyway, um, so we'll still go at 11 a.m. Um, but yeah, uh, there is a checklist, um, so just go through that. Even if it's not perfect, like come along, um, what we tried last time was actually everyone, because we found that people were going at different speeds, people at different places. So what we actually did was we had people just kind of going through the training and we were there to kind of help them with any blocks they had going along. So by the end of the day, like more people were like at the finish line and like earlier as well. So like people were finishing um, at different times, but they were but more people were finishing because they weren't having to weight on people with especially with like network collect connection issues and things like that so um that works a lot better but yeah from 11 a.m we'll just smash it out and get your whole funnel set up in a day so you're ready to go yep nice one thanks brooke um yeah the registration for that again it'll be posted in the community and it's in your newsletter um and we'll put it in fridays as well again just as a reminder and just by the by for anyone who's watching it's uh it's a mentorship client only thing so uh, this is just for our mentorship clients um so if you want to join in that uh swift tool sprint there is still time to join the program before that um but yeah just a heads up that's all yep, cool thanks brooke um all right yeah that was um a little segue there i was not expecting that but awesome <laughs> thanks coretta it was so good was so smooth yeah it was smooth we did not uh, set that up at all <laughs> that's all right he always keeps me on my toes that's good all right so now i want to pull out uh patricia uh thank you so much i want to take a moment to tell her seriously thank you for joining i know that maybe she was a little bit nervous to join us um, i'm personally proud of her because i remember having conversations with her at the beginning of her journey so i'm i'm super excited to hear what she has to share as well it's good to see you hi hi patricia nice to see you how's it going Hi, Alex. It's going great. Yeah. It's going great. Well, do you tell? Do you tell? I think, and I think being able to say that in itself is a massive win. Um, my name is Patricia Ferguson, for those of you guys that don't know me, and my offer is working with midlife women 
who are really discontent and frustrated with their lives, want to have a change and don't know how to get started. They connect with me and I empower them to make those changes. That's my offer, but that isn't my story. Um, being authentic, I am a consumer professional, but that wasn't my story. When I came into the strip program, I had no idea what I was stepping into. Absolutely none. And so I hit, you know, click and I went for a vortex. <laughs> And I was just like, what the hell is this? I you make it sound so great, Patricia. <laughs> I knew nothing about social media, nothing at all. I wasn't in it. I was from a group um, of friends who were really like, we, as far as we were concerned, social media was for the vain and the lazy, either people who had too much time on their hands or people who just needed to kind of live this fake life and basically so I had literally no engagement so when I came in and then there was the video journey and I was like what oh my god and then there was this all this stuff it was absolutely terrifying and I kind of got quite tenacious so I tried to push through but the reality is I really struggled and on my worst day I reached out to Rochelle to ask her how I how how what's the process for exiting the program because I was like as much as I'm pushing I'm really done and that was the turning point for me because then I had to say to myself like really are you gonna quit are you really gonna quit on yourself without having gone through the process to see if it can really work and um Rochelle is oh, sweet as she is she was like okay I'll set up a call and then we can jump on and talk about it and in that time of reflection I realized I needed to take ownership of my journey that there's different people coming from different places into this space some people are established coaches some people are business owners some are seasoned entrepreneurs and there were some people who is completely new. And I began, had to realize that any whatever anyone else is doing is nothing to do with me. I made the investment, I made the decision, and I needed to own that. And in owning the journey, I then took control. I needed to make SWIC work for me. And so getting launched, getting launched, flying through the modules just wasn't working for me. So I had to take a step back. I didn't even understand the language, guys. They were talking about an avatar. They were talking about, I was like, what? They were talking about, I think I remember Jay mentioned the word shift. And as far as I was concerned, shift is something on a rotor. So I'm now scrolling through trying to figure out what is a shift. And it was B to B, B to C. And I'm like, what? Funnels, like a funnel is something I use in my kitchen. <laughs> I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And so I, it was just like really painful. So I took ownership, took a step back and started to actually understand like, what do I need to do to make this work? And that's when I found my intention. I began to say, okay, what do I need to do? I've got to come at this in terms of not just going through because it's great people, great content, and you can really spend your time just like listening to everybody and everything and not actually doing anything. So I became intentional. I started figuring out what is it that I need. And I started focusing on the immediate step. Where am I? Where, what do I need to do to take the next step? Forget what's down the road, forget the webinar, Mount webinar that it was terrifying everyone. Just figure out, okay, get your offer right. Who are you? What do you want to do? I jumped on a call with Jay on the impact, the mindset calls. They're brilliant. And I remember having a conversation with him and he started to really trigger some things for me. And I remember making the comment that I didn't come here for this. I came here, you know, as a professional to be my professional self. And what I began to realize that I wasn't having imposter syndrome. I actually was an imposter and I'd been living my life behind this mask of professionalism 
And when I came into the program, it triggered that. And I had to deal with my stuff. And once I dealt with my stuff and I found my intention, things began to change. So I began having conversations that I would never have had. And that's how I landed my first client. And because I had been doing the work and paying attention, I realized that the pricing has nothing to do with the person. It's about where you are. And so once you get into that place where you're clear, and I, if I try and enter into a conversation where I'm not clear and I'm triggered, I, I, I can't sell, I can't even sell for 500 pounds. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I, but when I get clear and I'm in that clear space, my first sell was at 1500. And I felt no anxiety about going in at 1500. And that's because I'd started doing the work. I began listening and I began learning. I began listening to what the mentors were saying, not just getting caught up in the hype and the good feel, but paying attention. What do I need to do? What does this actually mean? So when they were talking about an avatar, for me, I was conjuring up, I had no idea, and I was just conjuring up my ideal person in my head, just like a fantasy. But it, I then, where I am now, what changed for me was I began to understand that we are all here on a journey and we're called to serve people. There are people that are specifically, so even if we're here and there's 50 people with the same offer, there are a different set of people that we are called to serve. So we're not going after the same set of people, even though we have the same offer. And so when I began working on my avatar, I began to realize there is this person that I'm called to serve. And that person then became real. I mean, a real person to the point that she had a life, she had a voice. So when I was having a conversation, I could hear my avatar. I was now just having, so when I picked up, I'm on my third client and I picked up the other two, just having conversation and thinking, this is a problem I can solve. I could just hear it. I was like, okay. And I started having that conversation, so, you know, asking questions and digging and listening, not diving in and talking and talking and talking, but actually stopping and listening and paying attention to what they were saying. And then using that to guide the conversation. And so that's how I ended up with my first and second client. Now I'm on my third client. And I'm, my offer is now up at 16 something, but I think it's 1670 I'm at. Nice. That's really a great share, Patricia. Really, uh, very heartfelt, you know, and, um, you know, gang, if you want things you've never had before, you've got to start doing things you've never done before. And doing new things makes you feel uncomfortable. And fair to say, Patricia's <laughs> felt that both barrels um but learning is a great journey right and now you do know what an avatar is now you do know what a funnel is you've built a funnel you've you know you've learned learned those things you've overcome those challenges and now how do you feel on the other side of that fence right amazing i'm sure so it's amazing yeah empowered more knowledgeable um more effective um all the good things so don't come into this gang thinking it's going to be a walk in the park that you just magic yourself um a whole new life for yourself you're going to be going in a different direction um and yeah you're going to have good days you're going to have bad days you're going to feel very uncomfortable i'm sure some more than others um but is it worth it what would you say patricia don't meet yourself just yet we're still on you Okay. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. What I would say is that I came in to find a business and I found myself in such a powerful way. Um, if you would see me when I started, if you see any of my, I mean, they're cringeworthy. I should never have been allowed in. I would never have allowed the old me in this space. It was absolutely cringeworthy. Um, I own that. Um, but this is what happens when you actually stick it out. You don't give up and you listen and do the work. Thank you, guys amazing wow that's powerful yeah 
Definitely. What a, what a turnaround. Um, and for many of you guys go through this as well. And I'm so happy and, and proud of you for coming to, to share that. I know that it's sometimes a bit edgy and a bit nerve wracking to come share something like that. But I know that other people we've, you and I've talked about this, Patricia, right? Just a week or two ago when we connected, I know that so many other people in the community are feeling similar things. So thank you for, for sharing that. That was awesome. Mm. cool inspiring right, so you think you can uh you think you can keep it up yeah. you should be able to unmute now i've heard a lot of things about fell and uh i've not I don't oh think god have properly. You? yeah everyone slags you off in the community no yeah, thank, god. <laughs> thank goodness for that no everyone oh. says like what a great guy you are and it's oh. really funny and a real character and stuff and i was like yeah i really want to meet this guy so uh yeah nice to meet you phil yeah yeah they all lie they all lie. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? We can. I am sat in a caravan just off the M25. Yeah. So good stuff. So so we could be getting anything. Now that sounds good, man. It looks like you uh got a good connection, so we're all good there. Excellent. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna follow that, Patricia. You were awesome. <laughs> um you know, it's uh and I'm, I I've got to echo exactly everything that that. Patricia said about service. It's uh, well, I'm very much on the on the same line. Um, so um, to the beginning. Yeah, like who you are, what you do. All right. How, and, uh, long, how he... long have you got? <laughs> uh, well, you know, don't take the Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Five five minutes. Brooks telling me I've now got four. Um, so backtracking i'm going to roughly rapidly backtrack five years um working abroad and uh we've been abroad for a few years in china and we decided that while we were helping out at an orphanage we were going to bring one of the kids back with us um you know because having one wasn't enough so why not um everything worked fine until we tried until it was time for him to leave china and essentially for the next six months from that point, uh, we lost everything. We, work went, um, we didn't have anywhere to live. Uh, we couldn't get Matthew out of, the, out of the country because the home office was taking so long. And eventually when we did get back to the UK, it really was starting from scratch. So you, you throw yourself into the everyday pattern of, of get up, go to work, you know, just do whatever you can to start rebuilding. Now, at that point, you go, there's got to be something else. There's got to be something better that, that I can do with my time. And so that's when this little video popped up. And this, this bloke called Alex was talking about selling what you know. Now, in my spare time, I am a nutritionist and um, strength and conditioning coach. So I'd spent a lot of time helping people, particularly with obesity, um, and helping them turn their lives around because it's a process that I've already been through. The return to the UK meant that I put on six stone in six months from stress, from going back to the old habits. Um, Mark could probably write a book on this one. Um, he probably has. So I was starting off and not in a good place, but this was a chance for me to use me as the example of a good example of a bad example. And being able to use that, I thought if I can use that with an online coaching platform that'll teach me what I need to know, then I've got a chance. So I thought, okay. And so I saw the video of Alex and so what you know. I thought, oh, that sounds all very good, 10 grand, blah, blah. But I don't believe it. So I kind of stalked you around for the best part of about six months, I think. And then eventually, because you know, that's what we do. And, um, yeah. and then eventually this email comes through and it says, we're going to do, we're going to do a three a three day workshop. I thought, oh, I'm 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 in 
I'm, I'm doing that. And at the end of that workshop, I had no doubt in my mind that what I needed was right there. Now I had to find the money. So I um, sold the mother-in-law, which was great. And, uh, you know, that didn't, and I got me about five pounds. And then, um, <laughs> and from there, I just decided that to move forward. And the question in my head was, if not now, when? If not now, when? And um, it's a good job Greg's not on the call because I think it must have been the easiest sell in the world, say Greg. And, um, and I've got a bit of a bone to pick with him. He didn't tell me about the, the 90 days video challenge, which, yeah. And that will change your life, most, most definitely. So from that point, it's, um, we've been creating, creating the content on, on the back of that. It was, uh, and it has been from start to first clients was exactly 90 days. Exactly 90 days. Um, I think that the program as a whole is more than I ever imagined it could be. And I don't say that lightly. I think the fact that you come in expecting, expecting to learn the tools that you need in order to bring an idea that you have in your head to bear, what you don't expect to get on the back of it, is the community, the friendships, the, yeah, Coretta, the gift, the gift that keeps on giving. And that is quite, that is exactly what it said in the tin. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm very humbled by it, quite frankly. Um, I have a, an amazing, uh, I have an amazing accountability team, Evolution, I know Errol's on the call. Um, he's another go-getter. Um, we sadly lost Lynn a few weeks ago, but if there is ever an example of somebody that's just got on with it, um, and that's very much it. So stepping back to the day to day, I just did exactly what the program told me to do. Um, I think that it's a testament to the quality of the videos in terms of the knowledge that they partake and the calls that everybody makes or the, the tickets that everybody puts into the system, which are then recorded and, and put onto Facebook. So for me, it was, I think I've, I've only ever submitted four tickets because I would get the feedback and I would watch everybody else. And I go, right, you need to do this, right? Okay, I need to go and do that. So in the last month, Prior to the sale, um, I was doing three posts a day across all social media platforms. Nothing fancy, just simple about, you know, whatever I could cobble together. It didn't look pretty. It wasn't pleasant. But, um, and the very final one that I put in was the mission statement. And I put the mission statement in on day 90 and within two hours i'd made the first sale amazing amazing and you've got three clients now is it two um two two sold up one potentially the start of this month and when you get actually to be fair he gets back from holiday in about five days uh -huh. so that should be another one um and three i turned down three you turned down yeah, because um, I wasn't right for them. Wow, that's good. Um, I, 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 it's one of those things. I think you, your, your first rule is, is do no harm. So you, what they were after was a short-term fix, and I'm not prepared to do that. You know, my, my program is very much a how to bring yourself, how to bring your body back under control, yeah, you know, with the lifestyle that you have. And we work with the lifestyle that you have. And, and it's an next example. And the first, uh, the first sign up, she 
is just just over a month into the program. She's just over a stone down. Um, she just walks and she hasn't drastically changed what she's doing. That's great. Just That's different good. choices. Fantastic. And uh, do you mind sharing how much you're charging for your program so far? Yeah, £1,825.37. Good. Well, somebody suggested that you should never have a round number. So um, I, got, I got the message and I got straight onto a call. And at the end of the call, um, she said, that's fantastic. Um, where do I start? And I, and I went, ah, um, uh, well, everyone else is paying two and a half grand. But you can have it for, you know, 1,800 quid. Um, and it was like, fantastic. And I was like, okay. How do I take the cash? I hadn't organized anything, so we just did bank transfers, but it got it. And that actually happened with client number two as well. Exactly the same conversation. And then I wish, you know, and that's the point where you go, damn, I should have charged a bit more. But nice kids. You, you, you take it on the reaction, don't you? Mm. Yeah. Well, congratulations. That's fantastic. And uh, yeah, great share. And, um, yeah, so um, force of thought, and remember Lynn as well, um, one of our clients who sadly passed away over the last month. Um, yeah, great share in the group um, when that happened as well, Phil. We all uh, already felt um, felt that loss. So, yeah, mm. thank you for being that pillar in the community when that happened. But I think that's the, that's the power of knowing you've only known them three months. But there are so many fantastic people in this community um, that the you know the other part is that you are, as Patricia said, everyone's got a different offer, and even if you've got the same offer, you are your target is a different person because they're they're attaching to you as an individual and your beliefs rather than it's not the product, it's the person you know as 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 you know better than anybody and the fantastic thing is that as I'm building my own program, I'm linking with other members of the SWIC community, like, like Yasmin, who is very much in-depth with the nutrition. There's Sarah, who's a fantastic running coach. I know nothing about running. But if I get a client that says, I'd really love to learn how to run, guess where I'm going to send them? Yeah. It's just it's a no-brainer, man. Yeah, well, you can mentor on each other's programs. There's all sorts of stuff you can do like that. Um, yeah, awesome. That's really, really cool. Thanks very much, Phil. Thanks for um, jumping on Born the call. No, no, it's good. It's interesting. It's powerful, man. Powerful. It's good. Yeah, it's what we want. Excellent. Just honest, Excellent. authentic uh, sharing a story, you know? That's what yeah. we do here. So thank you very much. Really appreciate it. No worries. It. So if people aren't on the program, then why not? Go and get them on it. If not now, when? As you not now, when? Not now, when? Now, where's speaking of which? Where's my gin? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Uh, when you get clients, three, four, et cetera, et cetera, please don't keep it a secret. Mm. I don't want to wait okay. just randomly on the check-in calls like this time. Okay. <laughs> You know. All right. Uh, we've got two more quick shares, guys. And then Brooke and I have some more incredible celebrations and then a couple of um, updates. Thanks for sticking with us. I'm going to pull out Marwana next and have her share her exciting journey. Hi there. I'm going to do a name check for myself. It's more Wenna because I know Sam calls me more Wiener and you call me something else. I'm like, it's more Wenna. It's a, it's a tricky one. So oh, more Michelle wet. literally never gets anyone's name right ever. No, no, I quite like what she does with mine. I can't actually do it. What she, I can't repeat what she calls me. It's like special. More wanna. More wanna. <laughs> Did you hear that, Alex? Take a moment. She said that it was special the way that I said her name. Thank it's you. Certainly <laughs> something. It's certainly something. <laughs> so yeah, I heard yours is Rochelle, not Ro Rochelle, Rochelle. So I'm gonna start trying to remember to do that. Anyway. So welcome, Moena. Good to have you here. And uh, you know the drill, far away. 
So I'm Mawena and my offer is I help mums who feel that screen time is taking over family life too much. They feel that they're losing their kids to screen time and I help them rebalance family life and get their kids back, basically. So it's um, speaking to parents who feel that it's just getting too much and they're kind of they're in, they're unable anymore to kind of connect with their kids or their kids are just wanting the screens all the time and family seems to have just been dissolving. So that's that's my offer. Um, yeah, I've got four clients now, which is amazing. And I started off last year with some organic stuff and did the mission post and everything and got some clients and did a kind of beta version last autumn. And then I launched earlier this year and it took me about 10 weeks or so of spending money on the Google ads and feeling really like, ah, and then I had a call with Alex and he kind of made some kind of tweaks to different bits of the system and then suddenly the call started coming in like literally almost within about three or four days so it was a really that was a really kind of I was getting to that point where I was thinking this isn't going to work and I've spent so much money and this isn't going to turn into anything and then it sort of we I think we made the survey a lot easier and what else did we do a couple of other changes to the campaign I think um I had a disqualification in my survey, which was there, which I took, we took out. And then there was a couple of other things, small, small changes, but they certainly kind of opened the floodgates. Yeah, exactly. That sort of um, optimization thing. So now I'm getting probably some seven or eight calls a month. And yeah, it's, it feels really wonderful there. I love my mums. I love the sessions with them. I'm doing one-to-ones with them and I'm going to start group coaching once I get my fifth client. So I'll probably try and start a group coaching thing in the autumn. And um yeah, it's just really, really, really wonderful to be sitting with them, talking with them, them being really trusting and open and having that. It's a very, um, it's a deep privilege to work with people on something as precious as their relationship with their child. And I'm a psychotherapist as well. So that's kind of my my, my training and my background. And so for me, I have clients in my practice who didn't get the parenting that they needed. And it's really, really, really sad, painful, hard thing to sit with as a psychotherapist. And I can't I can't go back and do what wasn't done for my clients back then. But my SWIP clients, I'm working with them so that they're going to parent their children in a different way. We do lots of work on language and playfulness and atmosphere in the house. And so my premise is let's get everything working well in the family. And then the screen time is just a symptom. Your kids aren't going to want to hide away in their bedrooms under their duvets with their tablet if they love being downstairs with you because you're happy and you're having a great family life. So I kind of feel like if I do a good job at SWIC, then I won't need there won't be need for psychotherapists in the future. Like it's that kind of idea. It's like if you can get the parenting right now, then it makes the future better for everyone. So I kind of. Yeah, I love it. I feel really happy doing this and I didn't know it was going to work and it works. So thank you. Amazing. Yeah. And like it often is just a little bit of tweaking here and there. Yeah. Um, that's exactly what we're here for. Like I've been saying all evening, you know, like already made all those mistakes. So just bring it to us and I can normally mm-hmm. fix it in a in a very short space of time. Absolutely. Sometimes it takes a bit longer, you know, sometimes the journey, you know, zeroing in on the right people is a, yeah. you know, is a nuisance sometimes, but you always get there as long as you're taking the right action, doing the right things, being consistent. Exactly. You always get there in the end. So and the sales awesome. calls with Sam as well. Like he, you know, I'd take the calls into Sam and then he would spot like maybe 30% of the way through the call. I was making a, a, a thing, a wrong statement or saying something wrong. And then I'd get that right. So then I'd get 50% of the way through the call. And then the next one would be better to that point. Then there'd be something else I had to improve there. So kind of refining the sales process bit by bit. I think I did 18 calls before I made a sale. So it was a quite a lot of calls and kind of thinking I'm really rubbish at this and then kind of just taking each each time he gave me a nugget getting that steady in my head so I didn't have to think about it and then moving on to the next bit of the script and then getting that laid down in my head and so it mm-hmm. felt like I just moved a bit closer to the line each time well you're twice as good as me because I did 40 four zero calls before I made my first sale okay yeah people when I say I've lived the pain I mean it so <laughs> yeah 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 18 calls you learn a lot in those first few calls you learn a lot about what people need helps you tune things in so don't ever treat them like a failure just because you didn't make a sale on those early calls they're all massively valuable learning experiences and um it was for me and so when I eventually did create my first program it was so in tune with what people needed because I'd heard it all from 40 people before and uh yeah and it 
it really was a success because of that i think so yeah good stuff and uh how much you charging do you mind asking there yeah, no, the first three were 1200 and then the, the fourth one was 1600 and i tried a couple at 1800 recently it didn't feel quite right so i might go back down to 1600 for the next couple but i'm gonna try and aim to be at two grand by christmas that's my goal um i'm getting my like my campaign now I did the Waitrose postcodes campaign. I don't know if you remember, but I went through and got all the Waitrose campaign postcodes in the country. That campaign now is starting to deliver me like one pound twenty leads and stuff, like really good leads. And I'm starting to get GPs and consultants and women who can say, "Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do that." So it's like suddenly I seem to be getting people who can afford it coming on, and that's that's taken a while to come through. Um, The other really interesting thing is I'm attracting women who are international who've come and lived who've moved to the country or are very culturally diverse so I'm not attracting the kind of I expected to attract people who looked like me basically and I'm attracting all nationalities women from who've come to the UK from all over the world because I'm just advertising in the UK and also Christians I'm attracting quite a few women of faith who talk about the church and how important that is to them and so when you said about you might be able to then create a different avatar based on what starts coming your way I'm like okay that's the kind of people who are resonating with this message great I can maybe go after them mm-hmm. yeah, yeah for sure that's interesting you say that um foreign mums uh tapping up for noise because uh it is like I know firsthand like it's culturally different like the way people parent their kids it certainly is in this house you know we you know me and Amina like come from different planets when it comes to that mm-hmm. and uh yeah there's there's certainly a lot of value in I can see like you know adjusting to a British kind mm-hmm. of culture or you know bringing in different um cultures of parenting as well so that's really interesting yeah it's really interesting so no it's it's amazing and just a very final kind of thing up after what Phil and Patricia shared, like about their personal journey it feels to me like because I'm a single parent and I wasn't quite sure how I was going to keep going financially and I have a reasonable job in the charity sector and my psychotherapy work and you know it's okay but this summer we didn't go crazy you're doing anything particularly crazy but the fact that I'd made three sales in July and one just before we went on holiday we had two we had two weeks away just in the UK camping but those two weeks because I just made a 1600 sale the day before we went I just went crazy on the ice creams, on the crepes, on the let's buy a new snorkel, let's whatever. They, if they said, yeah, I want to do this, mum, I was like, yeah, that's fine. Let's do that. And I didn't have to go, um, OK. I was like, yeah, cool. So it feels like my ease, like with my kids, mm. I'm just like, I feel easier. And that's that is like the biggest gift is to not be worrying about money and my kids not having to pick up on that. Yeah, that is the thing with the money difference. Like people wonder what it feels like. And it really is just that. It's just like you stop worrying about, you know, can I, can't I kind of thing. So, yeah, no. you still live your life. You still, you know, you still run out of space, still run out of time and everything. But it just helps you to, you know, do more of the things you want to do. So that's really great to hear and well-deserved as well. So Thank congratulations. You for everything. You're very welcome. Great to have you part of the community. I love that. This is great. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. And can't wait to see your other ones come up because I know that that will happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Sonia, you want to come on out and have a little chat as well? I know that you've landed your fourth client too, just recently. Hi. Yeah. Hi, Rochelle and everybody. Very nice to see you. Very nice to be here. Can you hear me okay? We can. Yeah, very well. Nice great. to see you, Sonia. How's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, Wow, I just feel so moved by the show so far tonight. Just incredible stories. I resonate with so many things that different people have said. I just wish we were having this wiki social straight after the show so that we could have conversations because there's so many things to follow up on with different people. Mm, That's not a bad idea. And um, I'd love to come to the next one. I couldn't come to the last one because I was out of the country, but yeah, I'd love to come. So uh, where would you like me to start? Well, just introduce yourself, what your offer is, and then tell us a bit about your journey of success, please. Yeah, okay. So uh, so I'm Sonia Falk, and um, my offer, um, I've named the business Intelligent Relationships. And it's because I'm all about communication and building relationships of various kinds, um, friendship, romantic, family, 
workplace. And um, intelligent, it's meant to be smart ways of building good relationships and communicating well. Um, and it also sort of refers to emotional intelligence because we know emotional intelligence is crucial for making good relationships. Um, but there's also a cognitive intelligence aspect to this because my specialism, I'm a psychotherapist and university lecturer, and I specialize in people who are in the top 2% of IQ in the population, um, which are sometimes called gifted people. I don't like that term. <laughs> um, but I've uh, written a few books on that. Um, so that's kind of very much something that's what I did my doctorate on. And the reason I came to SWIC is because I really wanted to find a way to package the knowledge and the practice differently to um, do the thing SWIC promises of separating your income from number of hours worked. Um, because as a psychotherapist, you sit hour by hour, one person at a time. And um, as university lecturer, you stand in front of a lecture theater of people one hour at a time. And I just wanted to try and scale what I could offer and reach more people. And um, I was really, really excited when I found SWIC. Um, and so, uh, yeah, what I wanted was to, to really try and scale it. So I started, I joined SWIC um, almost exactly six months ago. Um, and two of those months, I didn't do anything on it at all because I had um, a very close family bereavement, which was really difficult. Um, but around that, I um, got really working on it. And in, in my third month, month three, I signed my first paying client um, and uh, and then I've signed three more since then. Um, I've got a fifth one who has agreed to, to come on board um, and I'm just waiting for the money to come through. Um, so I'm not saying yet that I've got number five, but to all intents and purposes, I've got number five as well. And I was just looking at the stats. So I've done a total of nine strategy calls and four of those have signed up and paid. And the fifth one has said he's signing up, but it hasn't paid yet. And of the others, um, they're people who are saying they want it, but they want a bit more time. Like one said, I want to read your latest book first and then talk to you again and things like that. Um, and one of those calls turned out to be somebody during the call, it suddenly got confusing because I was thinking, does he want this for himself or what? Because it turned out he was like a regional officer for one of these high IQ societies for the youth division of it. And he was really interested in my offer for publicizing it to the, the youth. Um, and, and he uh, was saying in the call, can they get me to do a live webinar um, with the different regions around the country? The country and things like that so it's almost like it was a strange call but so and I've got a few other people I've just had people pop up all over the place so I've got quite a lot of stuff quite a lot of possible people in the pipeline and this is uh, what you call organic marketing I mean I like Patricia had no idea about the language of marketing didn't know what any of the stuff meant um, but I know that the people I've got so far are all through organic marketing. I, like other people, had nothing to do with social media, didn't know my way around it at all. With Jamie's help, I now have a proper LinkedIn profile. Um, and, and, and the most amazing things are happening. So, like, I had one here on my screen. I was, you know, away with my family Um in France and suddenly my phone pings and I get this message, a direct message through LinkedIn saying, um, I saw your profile and it really hit me. Is it normal for high IQ people to be so lonely? I always thought people didn't like me or didn't want to be with me. And it was just like, it just like pulled my heartstrings. And, and then when I asked her what stood out for you about my profile, she wrote, I think that you have experience with people in my position. So that kind of thing, I'm just kind of finding um, these, these, what I'm doing is really resonating with people. So, so what I did with the, 
the first two people who who bought the program like I wanted to build my materials and videos and everything really fast and kind of really get that um going so I was like like other people have said I was building the program on Swick tools week by week like one week ahead of of my clients and I wanted to do group calls so I was offering them some one-to-one and then I've done two group calls with those two together um, already. And we've got a third one happening tomorrow, in fact. Um, and they just went so well. And they were just amazing. And so one of the things as a psychotherapist, you know, it's against your, um, more when I will know this, um, it's against your um, professional code. You can't, like, introduce your clients to each other. But on Swick doing this, I can actually introduce my clients to each other. And because a lot of them are coming with this thing of they're a minority in society and they they have this neurodiversity and they really, really need to meet other people like themselves. So to be having an offer where I can introduce people to each other um, is, is a real change from what I was able to do before. So that's kind of amazing. Um, and what else? I've built a whole new website. So that just went properly live in the last couple of days. Like it's nearly completely finished. Um, and I've been just loving the program. I've met just such amazing people and all the coaches. I have had some really, really memorable learning moments with different of the coaches. So um uh, I mean, should I give you a little snapshot? Uh, okay. I'm sure, why not? Go for it. Okay. Um, so uh, because this high IQ thing is quite controversial and people often think if you talk about high IQ that you're being elitist or why does a person who's very intelligent need any help with anything because surely they're privileged and... And so you're kind of working against a lot of um, ignorance and prejudice. Um, and, and, and it's that thing of like internalized homophobia, for example, that gay people experience um, or internalized racism. Um, it's that thing where even though I'm the proponent for understanding this and having compassion for it, I am also cringing and feeling like, oh, I can't really sort of say this and so on my LinkedIn profile when I started building one I, I called my business helping high ability adults thrive and um and Jamie on the call said to me what's high ability <laughs> and I was like I'd sort of tried to explain it to him and he said to me why don't you just call it high IQ and I was like really cringing. And he said, you know, that's what you're on about. Yeah, maybe that'll put people off. But it'll also mean that the people who actually know that that relates to them will know that you're exactly the right person for them. And and so it was like this really weird moment. And um, it was quite funny because Jamie said to me in the call, he said, Sonia, I can feel your resistance. What's that all about? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a bit like Patricia you know you kind of have to find like what your own journey is so I embraced it I changed the name I called it helping high IQ adults thrive and because of that I'm getting a lot of stuff now so like Mensa which is an international high IQ society have invited me to present at their annual gathering in Birmingham in October wow, that's um great. uh there's a lot of stuff happening now because I'm properly going public with calling it, calling it what it is. Um, and Sam, I had a very interesting coaching call with him where he, he reviewed my first ever strategy call, which the person didn't buy. And Sam was really funny because he said to me, what are you like? Are you a coach or something? Because you're just letting this guy talk and talk and talk and talk. This is like the longest ever first strategy call. It lasted for like 90 minutes or something because as a psychotherapist, like that is my profession. You let the person talk. So so, so mm -hmm. the big learning from Sam was he said to me, you've got to stop them talking. Stop them talking so much. <laughs> so, so that was interesting. 
Um, and uh, yeah, what was the other one? I had one more memorable coaching moment. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, with Alex. So um, on the business compass, uh -huh. um, which was great. Like I definitely recommend that to anybody. It's an optional extra you can do. And, and everybody I know who's done it and including myself, found it just completely fantastic it really refines your focus and um and in that call there's a there's a part where you have to um create your vision for what the world will be like when your offer has done its job and um and so I wrote mine up and everything and then when he did the the um sort of critique of it my big learning there was that I kept saying what my offer was in terms of what I wanted to eliminate. So like, you know, a world without prejudice, a world without conflict um, and good relationships and good communication skills are going to eliminate conflict and um, prejudice and so on. And then he said to me, no, you have to write it for what there's going to be in the world not you mustn't name the thing you're eliminating because you're giving focus to the bad thing you've got to give focus to the positive thing that's going to replace it and it was like such a, ch a changed way of having to think and I found it really quite hard and then I found yeah so what what I want is a world where there's acceptance and a world where there's harmony you know so it's like the positive opposite to the thing you're trying to eliminate so, yeah, I mean, it's been a, just an amazing learning journey for me. I just find all the coaches incredibly inspiring, bright, fun people. Um, so I've been just really, really loving it. <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah, we, we're lucky. We have a, a good bunch here. And, uh, yeah, it's an honor to be a, a part of this team for sure. Well, that's amazing, Sonia. Thank you so much for sharing. Amazing, uh, amazing journey you've been on. And, um did you share already how much have you been charging these clients so far? Um, no, so I started um, with just under a thousand and then went to just over a thousand. And this fifth client, um, uh, I, I uh, quoted 2,500 euros because they're in Europe um, and they didn't bat an eyelid. So, yeah. Yeah, it's not a lot, I don't think. For, especially the kind of people you're talking to I think um you're obviously talking to high achievers aren't you so uh yeah I could see you know 5k being pretty straightforward before too long oh really that's really interesting to hear because I just have no idea so it's it's nice to hear that from you now that you know more about what I'm doing mm, yeah I think um like with anything if the the pain is strong enough and the solution is valuable enough um yeah. and the difference you're making is worth it to them i can see in especially in your field 5k to those guys would be nothing you know really nothing so mm -hmm. yeah why not i think that's a it's a great offer it'll give you the vehicle to be able to provide a lot of help and um yeah to to really provide huge value to them so yeah i mean build up to it but you're already jumping from a thousand to two thousand five hundred and no one cared so you know like you probably find it's the same up to 5k so yeah just yeah. it's just a mindset thing it's just your own barriers and everything but yeah go for it yeah which is interesting how you encounter what those are um and we clearly each have a lot of them in our own personal way so it's a very interesting journey i think for every one of us yeah for sure awesome well thanks very much sonia great share great story and um yeah thank you for the the nice examples of the uh, experience you've had is so what you know it's always good to uh, give the coaches props and um yeah thanks for sharing it's really really cool good stuff all thanks right very much so um yeah we'll, almost there we'll be sure to share the the shout outs with the coaches too i like to hear that from you guys we like to share that with them so mm -hmm. yeah let us know um yeah a couple couple other things and then we will be wrapping it up we've got uh brooke and i've got some celebrations that we want to do so let me uh pull my screen up i know that we took a little break from um for the the summer holiday so we're gonna um congratulate both july i almost said january don't know where that came from uh july and august's uh drawings for the competition so i will 
completion rather. Pull my screen up. Brooke, are you good? Yeah, I think so. Can you see my screen? I can see your screen. Awesome. And you can hear me okay? Yep. Cool. All right. Yeah. So like Rochelle said, we've had two months so that, and loads of people completing the 90 DBJ. And, you know, like um, Bola was saying, and uh, these guys were saying how much the, you know, being on camera is such a big part of actually getting success. And the 90 DBJ is something that really helps everyone kind of just get kind of come out of their shell help me too. Um, I'm also a client. I started back in uh, end of 2021 and um, I did dive straight in. I was, I, I didn't like it, but I, <laughs> I love it now. And it's something that I think every one of these people who have kind of gone through it have kind of experienced as well. So yeah, just a shout out to Rob Lannan, Chris, Errol, David, Martin, Anna, Greg, Suzanne, and Phil. A couple of you here on the <laughs> I see Phil there, um, still here with us. Um, and this was for July, I think? Yes, this was yeah, July. And we've got August as well. We do, but in between this slide and August, I had, well, never mind, it went away. Here's August. <laughs> and for August, Jason, Paul, Nicola, Joanne, and Dave have also completed the 90 DBJ. You know, a lot of guys go, try to like, kind of get there and they fall off and if you, you're in that position it's okay like just start again and, or, or don't and keep, keep going because the thing is yes you you know there's a lot of bonuses for completing it but there's also a lot of benefits to just doing these videos anyway right um and you know just being able to be comfortable on camera, be comfortable sharing, be comfortable talking about your offer, being comfortable with, you know, the whole setup and posting on Facebook and things like that. Because, you know, like these guys, they're, they're making money just by, you know, doing little videos and putting them on Facebook, who would have thought. So um, definitely keep going. And for you guys who have finished your 90 DBJs, keep sharing. Um, let us know how you're getting on and especially your wins and just your progress. Um, because it's also really valuable for the community, as you've heard from everyone here sharing their stories. Um, whether, you know, you get your first 50K in the first month or, you know, it takes you a little bit longer. And something I've heard less and less of these days is I feel like I'm behind. So people always used to come to us and say, like, I feel like I'm behind. And I think what people are realizing is we've all got a different pace that we're going at. Right. And yes, some people are going to, you know, just, you know, smash it out the gate. And, you know, that might be you. <laughs> you, you don't know until you try. Um, and it might be a case that, you know, it just takes you a little bit longer because there are some internal things that you need to work on as well. It was definitely the case for me. So wherever you are in your journey, keep going, keep sharing, keep inspiring the community. Definitely. And just to add to that as well, if you guys do your second round, I know that Brooke and I, and you guys have seen this in the community too, don't hesitate to use the second round for some of your practice content, right? Dave is doing that. I know you guys are watching Yasmin's uh, videos as well, where she goes through and gives some additional information. So don't, don't hesitate to leverage that group to, to get creative too. All right, um, Brooke, we got one more slide that I snuck in there. Uh, I think that you saw it. So I just wanted to continue to congratulate those uh, that also got their additional wins. Go for it, Brooke. Oh, I'm reading them out. Okay, cool. <laughs> I didn't know that one. Um, I did see it. I didn't know I was reading them out. Yes. Um, so yeah, everyone's getting all these wins. Moena, we heard from today. Uh, Doreen, great to see your name up there. Um, Patricia, again, we heard from today. Uh, Steve. Um, part of the team as well. Mark, great to hear from you, as well as Coretta. Nico, great to see you on the call. I'm not sure if you're still here, um, but good to see you here and congratulations. Hania, we heard from today. Nabila, Phil, awesome wins. Uh, Helen, we've got Daniel, Keith, Sonia, great to hear your wins today and Vaughn as well. So yeah, amazing. What, um, congratulations, everyone. Yeah. What did Doreen, what win was Doreen's? Uh, Doreen ended up landing those clients on her uh, event, live event that she had. I don't think it was a live event online, though. I can clarify that for you. But yeah. Doreen got some clients. 
Amazing. So everyone on this this got clients. Yeah. So this is a congratulations to everybody that landed either their first or their first couple of clients in the months of July and August. Awesome. Yeah. Good work, people. Nice one, guys. All right. Um, let me take this down just to make sure that my video is working. Um, I have not been able to watch these because Brooke won't let me. Actually, she'll let me, but. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch it together. <laughs> We're going to watch it together. That's right. So we've got the prize draw for those that completed the 90 day video journey in July and August. Uh, so here are, wait, I don't know why it's asking me for a password, but it is. Okay. Can you see uh, the video? Black screen, yeah. Well, is it a black screen? You can see that there's a video on your screen. Yeah. Hey guys, here is the prize draw for the July 90 day video journey completions. Congratulations to everybody who qualified. For July. Oh, Phil. You were right there. Good job, Brian. Hey. Rob, Rob. Rob Lanning, congratulations. Okay, so congratulations to Robin. Nice one, Rob. All right, let's do August. Okay, so now we have the prize draw for the August 90 day video journey completions. Again, congratulations to everybody who was able to complete the challenge. Joanne. Joanne, nice one. Good results. Okay, congratulations to Joanne. <laughs> Love Lauren. All right, guys, um, make sure that you please email support, some more support at sell what you know dot com to um, send your updated address so we can get that out to you guys. Um, all right, a couple of updates and announcements. Let me just pull my notes up. Um, well, so I had a couple shout outs, first of all, before um, we go into uh, a couple updates. I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Haya and Olga and Sabina. These three ladies, specifically Haya and Olga, setting up the LinkedIn and the Facebook pod. Um, they've created a little WhatsApp group within our community that when you guys are posting uh, your profiles, you can hop into this little WhatsApp pod and um, support each other, make comments on each other's threads. So shout out for the girls for putting that together. I think that's awesome. And then I also wanted to give Sabina a shout out because uh, in addition to Brooke's workstations that she's doing on Wednesdays, uh, Sabina has offered her time on Mondays and Thursdays uh, to open up workstations as well. Remember, we've got these workstations where you guys can join a Zoom link um, and just all of us who, who want to work together uh, can just come on to an open Zoom link. We'll keep our cameras on. We'll smash out some SWIC work together. Um, and yeah, so I wanted to give Sabina a shout out for that because she loves it. Uh, she, one day wasn't enough. So she wanted to do a couple more days. I thought that that was, that was awesome. So we'll start adding that to y'all schedules and on the calendar. Awesome. Um, the other, all right, so update and announcement. I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw the Facebook uh, training, not just the organic Facebook training that Brooke has been tirelessly filming for us and putting that up, but Alex also posted updated Facebook training in the marketing mastery module. This is oh, not the- ads, Facebook ads training. Correct, basically. sorry. Facebook ads uh, in the marketing mastery uh, module this paid marketing so you guys have all new facebook on on both aspects so if you can't find that just let us know and we can help you find that and the other thing that i had on my list was the swick tools um the swick tool sprint day but that was a surprise in the middle of the call that we shared we about that. <laughs> brooke did you have anything that you wanted to add or share or am i missing anything i know i went through that quickly the only thing I would say is, yeah, if anyone else does want to host a, um, a workstation, like let us know, um, because I know that there are different times that people can make. Um, I know a lot of people want to do mornings. Um, I'm usually 
in EST time zone. So that's very, very middle of the night for me. Um, but, you know, other people, if they want to like host at different times, like let us know 100%. Uh, we can put that into the schedule and, you know, let people know that that's available for them as well. Definitely. Cool. Thanks, Brooke. So I just want to round out with one uh, little value add. So this is for you if you are always saying to yourself you're too busy, you haven't got enough time to get things done. Just take out your phone. Take out your phone. You can do this all now. This is an eye-opening exercise for everybody to do. And depending on what device you have, so we'll do Apple first, then we'll do Android. So if you're on an Apple device, you want to go into your settings. And then down to screen time. And then see all activity. And then push week. And that's going to show you how many hours in the last week you've been on social media or YouTube or whatever it is on your different apps. And, uh, you know, have a look at how many hours you've got there that perhaps you could recoup and if you're on android you're going to settings and then down all the way down it's quite a way down to digital well-being and parental controls and then uh you can tap show your data now you might have set up a profile if you're an android but it's the same deal same same principle so yeah just little tip if you're feeling like oh i've got time for this i'm too busy it's too much work i haven't got time just like do that on your phone remind yourself you've actually probably got five to ten hours every week um, that you could easily get back very quickly. So anyway, gang, it's been a mammoth uh, sesh tonight, but uh, a good one. And I hope you've all got value. Thank you, everyone who's uh, jumped on to share their stories, being emotive, inspiring, powerful, um, as always. And uh, I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for uh, being here, for doing our program, for being on the team and supporting everyone um it really does mean the world to me and yeah i'm gonna push ahead and try and organize a meetup in the next few weeks so do your best to try and make it to that if you can be great to have some new faces come along to that um we'll try and get in a monthly uh pattern with that i think it'd be good to do um it's how i used to do it years ago so it was always really valuable so yeah let's try and uh try and do that shall we all right gang take care thanks a lot thanks everybody and um i'll see you all very soon bye for now take care bye.